you know, what I hear a lot about is like turnover and how they just disappear and stop responding and, and all these different things. And we're not having that issue. We're not, we're not having that issue. We're not micromanaging the heck out of them. We're not doing a computer share. We're not doing a, you know, they clock in and they, they timestamp out and I'm monitoring every bit of activity. We have our projects, we have our tasks. Uh, they have the expectations of which we need to get them done. And like a lot of businesses, sometimes there's slow times, sometimes there's busy times. I expect things to get accomplished and get done, but I'm not sitting here babysitting all of this staff to make sure, oh, it's 10.33 a.m. Eastern time. Are you at your desk? Are you clicking away? Not doing that. Welcome back to the Big Dog Podcast. I'm Josh. What's your name? Logan. You're Logan. Yeah. Welcome. Thanks. First time here? Yep. Huh? Nah. Been in here for a minute? A little bit now. Almost a year. Yep. I think March will be a year that you've been been helping out. Starting to get featured a little bit here on the Big Dog Podcast. Yeah. Does it seem super quiet to you? No. Not like volume like in my ear, but just feels very like quiet like maybe it's because the weather maybe it's the ac isn't oh yeah the ac's off it's nice how crazy is it that your sister got out of school a couple hours ago what's that weather look like out there son a little sprinkle a little sprinkly massive alerts early release high wind warnings rain clouds maybe it's later but i don't see much right now well hey at least they were home safe at one o'clock. Well, high school's got to get out before all the other schools. So, like, if high school gets out at one o'clock, that means the elementary school gets out at like two thirty. So they, got, if they're gonna let, like, if they need elementary school out at two thirty, they need the other schools out earlier. But they, I mean, whatever happens to the little kids happens, because they just got to do high school, middle school, elementary school, yep, preschool, aftercare, before care. Anyway, I think it's a lot of weak sauce. Yeah, possibly. I mean. Tornado threat. I think it's a big difference between a threat and a warning. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. not like there's snow and ice on the roads. Threat means it's like a possibility. Warning means that like it's seen somewhere, it's, right? It's imminent. Yeah. Imminent. I hate it when the Weather Channel pops up that word. Imminent. Man, I'm seeking shelter, whether shelter is needed or not. Like, it's going to be a scorcher outside. It's imminent. Woo! Let me get some shelter. Ideally with air conditioning. So I can get out of school early. It's lame. You think I should close the offices for the weather? Today? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, I think we're good, huh? I think we'll make it. I think we'll make it. You know, it's funny, though. I talk about shutting the office down. Not a whole lot of us here in the office. We got a bigger team than we've ever had in the history of me having support staff. And not a lot of these jokers work here. They don't. I mean, the vast majority don't even, like, are overseas. It's awesome. And that's what I want to talk to people about today is you, you, some of you have heard of or you're aware of the VAs out there, virtual assistants. Well, let me tell you, I had a very, very, very large misconception on what these individuals could do, capable of, capacity as a whole, and so much so that we don't even have VAs. We have VPs, virtual professionals. How you like that? And I'm going to get my good friend, Scott Ramage, who helps us with all of our VPs. It's actually the name of his business was Media Machine previously uh, when they rebranded to fit more of who they place. Because I've heard, man, just nightmare after nightmare after nightmare horror story with people who have made these hires of these virtual assistants. And there's some stateside, most are overseas. All of ours are overseas. And what they really are, they're virtual professionals. I mean, the work that they do is just freaking incredible. Incredible. The skill sets are out of this world. Communication, overwhelmingly, really, really high and timely. Execution of tasks, crazy high. I mean, it's it's probably the best team that we've ever put together. And we've been actively working with a uh, virtual professional for, gosh, coming up on a year now. I think March was when we made our first hire. And now we have close to a dozen across brands who are doing different things from 
podcast production to social media management to video editing to assistant roles, admin. It's bonkers the amount of things that we're able to uh, leverage and how we're able to scale by making use of remote staffing. And the other thing that it's led me to feel really good about is not everybody has to be together. I've always been in the mindset of like, hey, we got to be in here, clock in, not clock in, clock out, but like this when the office day starts, this is when it ends, you know, we're going to be in the office together, build that morale, um, you know, rah, 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 man, nah, we, we don't, we don't need all that. It, we, we really don't. And we're proving that we're actually better without it. And the more flexibility that we've offered to even our staff on the state side, it's pretty tremendous, you know, how effective they've become uh, because of their own capacity and their own personal growth and the way they're able to execute by commanding their own schedules. They know what needs to be done and they're just knocking it out of the park. And that's the same thing that we're finding out with a lot of our, our VA staff, VP staff, if you will, that, you know, uh, what I hear a lot about is like turnover and how they just disappear and stop responding and, and all these different things. And we're not having that issue. We're not we're not having that issue. We're not micromanaging the heck out of them. We're not doing a computer share. We're not doing a, you know, they clock in and they, they timestamp out and I'm monitoring every bit of activity. We have our projects. We have our tasks. Uh, they have the expectations of which we need to get them done. And like a lot of businesses, sometimes there's slow times, sometimes there's busy times. I expect things to get accomplished and get done. But I'm not sitting here babysitting all of this staff to make sure, oh, it's 10.33 a.m. Eastern time. Are you at your desk? Are you clicking away? Not doing that. So much of what we do is routine and project-based. Hey, are we knocking this project out? Great. You know, and I don't mind there's a little bit of margin in time because a lot of times I need something last minute. If there's margin... We're available to get stuff done last minute. But these remote employees, guys, it's wild. that It's very cost-friendly. The investment is extremely competitive and friendly for a small business. Uh, quality out of this world. But you want to find somebody. I mean, there's sites you can go on and you can, you know, hire one-off contracts, you know, hire skill sets. You need a logo design. You need some video work done, maybe some audio production, uh, maybe some data entry, anything at all, really. You could find someone to hire on a contract basis and probably be pretty dang cheap. My thing is I want to build relationship. I want to build a team and have a team of people that value what we're doing here at Off Leash Canine Training and Team JW Enterprises and the other brands. They value it just as much as I do and you do. And that's what we're really finding. We haven't had We've yet to lose a single remote employee. We haven't done it. We haven't had any turnover with it. Um, we're constantly getting emails and text messages. Hey, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the work. Really appreciate it. You know, every morning, it's good morning when they're done for the day, letting us know, hey, we're wrapping up. But if you need anything, let me know. It's just been a really, really great experience. So if you are, you know, growing, but you're getting a little over leveraged with your time, I would highly recommend that you consider bringing in some virtual staff and it's it's tremendous part two of that is are you leveraging with ai at all and we'll talk about that another time maybe the next episode i'll talk ai a little bit and some new implementations that we're doing to share with you and we'll drop some links to some tools but you know the the remote staffing is a very not easy way there's still costs involved obviously but um, if you've got good structure in place, if you've got good systems in place, and you can put some SOPs together, I mean, hell, make the hire and have them create the SOPs based on what you train them on, they can step in and take a lot off of your plate. And then you start really figuring out, oh, I could use help with this. I could use help with that. Wow, you're way more skilled than I realized. Uh, what do you think about this? We're revamping a whole communication structure and communication style for inner office stuff. A new assistant, she's like, oh, Josh, I've got something I want to show you. And so we're sitting down this afternoon and, and walking through her demo of it. And she says, it's going to change my life. I've looked at it a little bit. I tend to believe her. I think she's going to be right. And I'm excited for it. Because if it makes life easier for me, it's going to make life easier for the team. And if it makes life easier for the team, they'll become more efficient, which will help us to increase excellence, create a better product or experience to the clients. Everybody's winning. Client wins. Staff wins. Management wins. I win. We Gucci. So all because we were willing to take a chance and learn 
about some other opportunities out there. And when you Google this type of stuff, a lot of the things you hear are, are, like I said, not great stories. But I think that people are either trying to do this on their own from a staffing standpoint or go super cheap and and they hire someone for a one-off project or two and they convince them to bring them on full-time and then it's a nightmare because they're disappearing. That's That's not the way to do it. That's not the right way to do it. And we know a lot of folks who run some really, really good agencies. And um, we're going to get Scott on here to talk more about it on, an, on another episode because uh, he is the expert. But he's been tremendous help with us. So if you've got questions about the virtual assistant or virtual professional space or you're active in it yourself or make use of it, I'd, I'd love to hear about it. You know, send us an email, shoot me a message on Instagram, you know, comment on the post and share with us your experiences as well and let people know you know, the good and the bad. There's good and bad to everything. But if you've got systems, good processes in place, you can have a really good ex- success by leveraging these remote employees. And this, guys, is where you find margin. So you can get dialed into doing just the things that you can do because you got good people doing the other things that anybody could do. We'll see you next time on the Big Dog Podcast. Mm-hmm.